What are you noticing, Sean, about the depth of high school talent right now across the state of Nebraska from your first stop so far? Yeah, I mean, there's just, I mean, there's kind of just a merging of talent to, you know, five, six, seven programs in Omaha. And you just see so many guys now at a young age that are developed. And, and that's the biggest thing that jumps out, especially when you start to get to the Elkhorns and the Gretnas, Creighton Preps, Bellevue West. I mean, they have kids West Side that, you know, at you know, young ages, freshmen, sophomores, that you can already see just the development they're on, the path they're on, you know, the, the, the potential they have in their, you know, their careers to go. And um, there's a lot of young talent. I mean, we, I, I saw several 2026 20, kids that you could just already tell you know, that, where, where they're headed right now. But those will be freshmen in high schools, obviously, in 2025s. And, you know, we're, we're mainly looking to get make sure we don't miss on the 2024 names. But mm-hmm. I really enjoy doing these things because you get a jump on the 2025 and 2026 names to know. And you know, I think about a year ago, Caleb Pifram came to this event. Mm-hmm. And I, mm-hmm. I saw his dad, LeVon, played basketball at Creighton. And I'm like, yeah, that guy, <laughs> you know, he's a little different than the other kids in this room. And um, lo and behold, about a year later, um, he got he got his first offers, and now he's got several. And Ashton Murphy from Elkhorn South was another guy. I mean, you could just tell after his sophomore year where he was at physically, and he's 6'5", 240, and has Colorado and Nebraska now offering him. So, you know, that, that's what you're really trying to do is make sure you, you're not missing on any names um, around the state. Sean Callahan of Husker Online joins us. Sean, just in a nutshell, we we talk about this in-state tour like people know know they, like people know what it is. What is it essentially? I mean, what what are you doing in this in-state tour? It's a it's a data collection. It's a media day. Okay. Um, you know, it's not a camp um, or a workout or anything like that. So we um, you know we had sixteen teams we invited to come into Omaha, and over a hundred players came. And then in two weeks, we'll be down in Lincoln at Chris Slatt's training facility. Um, and we've got, I think, 12 invites out for teams right now. But um, we bring the players in with their prospects, their coaches, their jerseys. Um, you know, we get accurate heights and weights, which Coach Bush would say is very important um, because obviously um, oh, yeah. most of the time everyone's giving themselves an inch. I mean, you get a lot of kids that are six one that are five eleven. You know, and mm-hmm. for coaches, that's extremely important. And then the weight side of it as well, and um, all the other data. We get photos, and then we do interviews. So it, it's it's really just to make sure we get everybody in our system. And you know, we're the only service around here that does that mm-hmm. for all all the kids. So we, we want to get get them off. And now we have an NIL piece to the profile at on three, and the players can get access for free once we get them in the prospects um, to some of the NIL features. So that, that's another cool thing this year. Um, now that we're with on three um, that I walked a lot of the kids through on Sunday. Uh, Sean, regarding the spring game again, spring football coming up, but the spring game will be in April. Uh, enthusiasm seems high so far in terms of ticket sales. What's the update on ticket sales compared to previous years? Where are they at right now? From the last time you checked? Um, I don't have a new update yet this week. I mean, I know they were at 36,000, um, basically like two days in. Okay. Um, so they're, they're probably in the forties is my guess That's right good. now. Um, it, it's, it's, it's strong. I, you know, you got to remember Jake in 2018 and yeah. 2019, they sold the game out in like two or three days. Ooh. Um, okay. Oh, God, forget about that. Yeah. People just um, forget about that. So it, it's, I think it's probably on a pace to, you know, I don't know, sell out to what I want to say, but I, I think they, they're going to probably have a good shot at like getting in the seventies. Um, if I had to guess, a lot of it's weather related. I mean, remember the first year frost, they sold it out so quickly um, in 2018, but it was cold. It ended up not being so that people bought tickets, but probably didn't show up because it was a really chilly April spring game. Um, so weather and other things factor in, but yeah, they're, they're well on their way to probably getting 70 plus thousand in there. And, and who knows, maybe more. I mean, as, as we get closer to the date, do you sense, I mean, Jake said enthusiasm seems high is that your sense? And if so, why? Oh, I just think in general, Nebraska fans are always optimistic. Um, you know, it's like being a major league baseball fan. Every April, you're, you think your team's going to win it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think Nebraska fans have the same kind of mindset and optimism. This yeah. is our year. Let's do it. This is our year. Right. 
<laughs> here we been a lot of times we're back here in January and February <laughs> trying to figure out why it wasn't our year. So um, I, I just think Nebraska fans by nature are optimistic and always excited this time of year. And the spring game is just a celebration of being a, a Nebraska fan. It's, a, it's an excuse to get together on a Saturday in April in Lincoln. And um, the game itself to me, is, you know, especially the way you know, in the last few years, they really didn't even tackle with the ones. Or, or, or do some of those things. So the game itself's not really, um, you know, what you're there for. I think it's just a reason to kind of celebrate being a Nebraska fan is, is what the spring game's become. So my Sean Kelly and Sean, our neighbors to the east, Iowa, were in the news this week regarding what they did with Brian Ferentz, a very, very slight reduction in salary for his bad performance this year, and a, a goal of 25 points per game and, and seven wins for the program is kind of the incentive for, to get a bonus for him this upcoming season. What is your take on, on everything with, with Iowa? Brian Ferentz, again, the defense, great. Special teams, great. Offense, bad. He is retained. With they've, it's just a slap in the wrist, basically. Why why is he still there? Well, the, I, I don't know what they could have done other than, like you said, fire me. I think they would have had to literally publicly tar and feather him and then give him a paid <laughs> degree for, for, for people to be like, yep, that's sufficient. I mean, yeah. it, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know um, – I think it goes back to the mm-hmm. quarterback play there. I mean, yeah. you you look at Iowa. I mean, they're they've had really poor quarterback play since Spencer Spencer Peters took over. Before Peters, they had NFL guys like seven years in a row. It's a little. It's no. It doesn't take rocket science to figure out the quarterback's a big part of your offense. That guy was not good. I mean, no. he, he was just very average Big Ten conference. Um, but they figure out a way to win games with defense and special teams and running the ball in short yardage situations and doing what they had to do, great tight ends. Um, so I'm not trying to defend Brian Ferentz, but I, I think the quarterback position is a big reason why. Um, I mean, they, they made a run at Adrian. They, they reached out to Adrian ooh, uh, Martinez. I, I know that for a fact. Um, so they, they were trying to uh, – we had that on the site a year yeah, ago. Yeah, I just Jeff. forgot. I just forgot. That's fascinating. Um, you know, in the portal, but obviously the Kansas State thing was a, a big, you know, a, a slam dunk for him when that went on. But they were – they had to improve that quarterback play. I'm really intrigued to see what it's going to look like uh, with Cade McNamara, the Michigan transfer in that offense, because he's going to be considerably better than what they've had the last three years with Spencer Peters. Yeah, and they were really bad up front, too. So you combine Peters with a bad offensive line and then a, an injury-plagued receivers group, and you get trouble. Now, I'm going to switch gears pretty hard here, Sean. LeBron. James became the NBA's all-time leading scorer last night. What kind of celebration will this be across America today? <laughs> I, I did see it on my phone this morning when okay. I woke up. But why um, are you laughing, Sean? I, I don't. I don't know if it's going to get a lot. I mean, I don't, around here, I don't know if people are going to, you know, stop their day to to think about it too much. Right. Um, but you know, he's, he's a hell of a player. He, he's done a lot in basketball and. Mm-hmm. He's played for a long time, I and mean, that's the key. I mean, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know, actually, it's more remarkable because he didn't get to start playing in the NBA when he was 18. Right. Um, right. The fact that he held that record for that many years and played that many years mm-hmm. um, in an era where the game was probably a little bit more physical in terms of how they played it, mm-hmm. um, that actually gets my attention as much as LeBron's record because the fact that Kareem was able to hold that thing as long as he did. Good take, Sean. Sean, thanks for the time. We will chat, uh, chat with you again next week. Good job, Sean. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Husker Online, Sean Callahan. He laughed her when I asked the question of what kind of celebration it'll be. I think it, it'll be celebrated, guys. It'll, it'll be celebrated. Should be. Just not much here. Like you said, in Nebraska, I don't. I just don't think you're going to see a lot of celebration there. It's not an NBA state. Well, not parades, but um, it is not an NBA I don't know. See, I, I'm I, again. I told you off air. I'm uncomfortable with the discussion because I used to follow the NBA. We used to talk about the NBA and our when me and Bill were young. It used to be something we talked about a lot. Now we never talk about it. And people don't want us to talk about it. It that's not the way it used to be. It used to be like the Bird Magic years. It was a, it was from really game one to the playoffs. It was interesting. I'd like to know what year it officially started dropping off. I don't know. I, I don't no know. Idea. I don't have the answer to that. But when did it? When did the NBA begin its decline? I don't, don't know. know. I don't. Some and some people there. are going to say, "What decline are you talking about, Jay?" Oh, there's a decline. 
Okay. The numbers would indicate that the viewing numbers are not as strong as they ever mm-hmm. were in the past. Probably Still. when, probably Fat Lever and probably Issel, if the Nuggets started to go down, they were always very competitive in the West and they started to drop a little bit. That's where I see it. Fat Lever and Issel. Issel with the missile. It- 